otherwise, the game is pretty solid. Um, wooden dice. If you have a phobia of wooden dice, I guess you may not like it, but it doesn't bother me. Um, the pieces, the cards themselves, nice, durable, have no issues there. Overall, a great value. The components are thick, easy to manipulate, work really well with the game, and I just love how colorful they are. Um, you know, the board itself isn't super colorful, but that's good because then the components really show up on the board. What I'm enjoying about the game is that there's an awful lot of decisions that you do have to make, but the decisions typically come with a sacrifice. Each turn you're having to dismiss a card or discard it or play it somehow out of your hand. You know, you're going to be able to recruit characters as you're going through the game, but at the same time, you're probably going to end up discarding or turning into houses characters that you really wish that you would have been able to recruit. That's the balance of the game, and that's what I think I really enjoy is the, which ones are going to make it and which ones aren't into your tableau. I really like that the cards actually have the actions that you can take over on the right-hand side of the card. And each round, you play four cards. So that keeps things uh, fairly simple as far as playing your first game and learning how to play the game. You know, and the other difficult thing is is that you, you don't really know which characters you're going to draw as you keep going through the game because just because you see the back of the color of the card as you're drawing them, it doesn't mean that, that, okay, I drew a purple, so therefore that's a royalty, you know. I drew a brown, therefore, you know, that's the assassins or whatever. You don't know what you're going to get. So that can make it difficult as the game progresses because... If you're wanting to try to uh, concentrate, say, on a certain group of people, remember there's 11 different classes. So the chances are you're not going to get a whole lot of the same type of class person in front of you. That really creates a lot of variabilities and a lot of replayability as well because you're going to create all kinds of really cool combos with the cards you do play in front of you. Uh, one of the aspects of this game that I really appreciate is the threat tokens um, because as an action, you can actually get rid of a threat token, so that adds to the strategy of the game. It's another decision you have to make. At the same time, uh, when you get three of the threat tokens, something bad is going to happen to you. So it can really make a big difference in the game if someone's getting rid of threat tokens, somebody else isn't bothering to do that. Building the canals can be very cumbersome, and it's probably one of the weakest part of the games that I really don't enjoy very much. But if you overlook this too much, you're going to miss out on a lot of victory points. If you build at least to the third spot on each side of your guardhouse, you're going to get a total of six victory points. That's also not including the fact if you get to the fifth spot and complete the canals on both sides, you're going to be able to get statues that are worth victory points as well. I also wish that the reputation track would have actually been worth something more than just victory points or majority bonuses. It'd be neat if you moved up the further you did that maybe it would actually subtract off the cost of being able to recruit uh, people in front of you, but the only thing it is actually good for is just victory points at the end of the game. So it's easy to even overlook this one to try to save your guilders to recruit people, but if you do, you're going to miss out on some victory points. And I've actually one time have made it all the way up to the 12th spot, and that's out of probably about 15 games we've played, so it's not the easiest uh, thing to achieve. One game that this reminds me of is Tournay, um, which actually is surprising because I really, really enjoy this game. I love it, and I don't like Tournay at all. But I think that the difference is that this game uh, is it's easy to learn how to play. You don't have to learn a whole different language full of symbols in order to play this one. Um, it, it feels to me, personally, like this is the game I wish Tournay was. Carmen made a comparison and she thought that uh, this game reminded her a lot of Tournay and if you've ever played that, it is very similar to this because you're actually playing the cards in front of you, you're creating a city, kind of like you're building the houses and you're putting the residence in, in this game. It reminds me somewhat of Guildhall for some reason and I guess the reason is because I'm putting characters in front of me and depending on how I use those characters, you know, gives me different types of actions per character. So if you like Guildhall, I'm, I'm pretty confident that you're going to like this and if you like Tournay, you're probably going to like this as well. Thank you for watching. So the purpose of this video was to just give our opinions quick and to the point. However, we do also have a live play of this up and uh, it's going to show you the game how it plays out in real time. We play the entire game from start to finish and uh, gives you a great feel as if uh, this is going to be a game for you or not. Then on top of that, we actually have a how to play video out as well, which even goes into more detail teaching on how this game plays. So if uh, you like what you hear, why don't you go see if you like what you see. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.